kit, you'll have a black wire and a red wire. Those are for the two jumper wires that we'll make. There should be uh, two sets of alligator clips. Of course, those go on the ends of each wire. Right? And there should be two, two fuses with fuse holders that have little leads on the end. There'll be a piece of heat shrink tubing for each one, and then uh, a set of black, these little sleeves go over the alligator clips. A set of black sleeves, a set of red sleeves. You can do it however you want. I can like to match red to red and black to black. But uh, open this up. In fact, I'll ask somebody to plug this in. Somebody like to plug this in right, right up there? Somebody can reach that. Let's make the red uh, jumper wire together here. And we're going to solder. And soldering I know is new to some of you. How many of you have soldered before? Some of you have. How many of you have not? Some of you have not. Okay. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll strip the insulation using the wire strippers. We'll strip about uh, a half of an inch off of the uh, of insulation off of the end of the wire, exposing the copper. This is 16 gauge wire. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to take our fuse holder and do the same thing with it. It's a little bit higher gauge wire, but uh, that doesn't matter. It'll be just fine. It's always safe to use a higher gauge wire than what's specified, right? Mm -hmm. You just don't want to use a smaller gauge. And we'll talk about wire gauges later, but. Uh, the gauge size, actually, as the number goes up, the wire gets smaller. So a 16 gauge wire is smaller than <coughs> this here is probably a 14 gauge wire. It's fatter. Does that make, it, it's kind of, uh, it's backwards, it's hard to remember, but it, that's the way it's done. Okay, so we're going to solder these two together. And in order to do that, now we can put the heat shrink tubing on later. This heat shrink tubing is going to seal this when we're done. We can always slide this on later, but I like to just kind of make a habit of making sure my heat shrink is on before I solder, because sometimes you can't get it on later. Right? <laughs> and I like to just spread the wire strands out just a little bit here. Just fanning them out? Yeah, just fan them out a little bit. Put them together like this and twist them. Does that make sense? And the better I twist them, maybe the better this will hold together. I also, if you have a vise, you can also just kind of clamp these in the vise so they're sticking up like this, and that helps to hold them steady, and that makes this so much easier than trying to hold the wires while you're soldering. you want to do it? Somebody to hold it for you? This is a soldering gun, and here's the solder. Of course, whenever you're soldering wire, you want to use a rosin core solder. It has some rosin in the middle of it that helps the solder to adhere to the to the wire and, and also to absorb into the wire. Okay, the rosin core solder is made for uh, for electrical repairs. You hold the trigger down on the gun, and it will take a, a few seconds, but it will it should get hot. Solder is made. Solder used to be made of lead and and. Uh, tin and a little bit of silver, and lead's kind of become uh, less, less popular. Lead is less popular, so now our, uh, our solders are mostly made of like silver, but it works almost the same way. And to, to solder something, you can see how that solder is melting now. This is hot enough to melt that lead and that tin. We want to melt this so that it uh, absorbs right into this. If I start doing this, it'll drip. Right, it'll eventually drip off, see that? But, if I touch that, it does not bond, see that? That's not a good thing. We want, this to, we want this to bond. So in order to make this bond, we have to heat the wire first. And in order to make this work best, you want the, to heat the wire and then touch the solder onto the wire. Well, it may not melt very well, so touch the solder between the gun and the wire to help transfer the heat into the wire. Once it does that, you'll be able to touch the wire like that. See the solder melting into it? Let it cool for about five seconds.
Okay. And we've, we've got that joint done. Now, we've got this heat shrink on here. We also want to put an alligator clip on here. Whatever you do, do not forget this. <laughs> this goes on first. Okay. So twist, twist the wire so it's tight. Put a little bend on the end so that it just stick it through here. The wire will pop up through that hole. Then take, use the crimper portion of this, of this wire stripper crimper tool. To crimp that, hold, that'll hold the wire in, make this easier. And I'm going to solder this wire to this alligator clip as well. Okay, so same principle. Let the gun heat up. We want to heat the, which part? The wire. The water, the wire and the alligator clip. We want to heat that. If we do it that way, the solder will bond really well. Okay, and to help, how, what do you do to help transfer the solder into the joint? In touch the gun and the gun. Gun. Yep, touch the solder to both. And then you should be able to solder it without, see how the solder now is going in there? A few seconds to cool. And once you're doing that, it's bonded. It wasn't like it was on the bench here, or they didn't bond to the bench because the bench wasn't hot. But it's bonded to that. I'll give that a few more seconds. On the other end, make sure you've got your heat shrink there for that. On the other end, make sure you install your, yeah, your cover first. Bend the end. Stick it up so the wire is sticking up, up through. Crimp it so that it stays. We'll solder this one. Walk me through the steps. Heat up the wire. So heat up the wire, then what? Between the wire and the solder between the two of them so that it transfers in. He, this one worked a little better than the last one. Right? When you're done, it should be uh, shiny. That's a good sign you did it right. Just a little bit. <coughs> yep, just enough to absorb into the wire. Huh? Now that this is cooling down more, I want to come down here and this is how I stick these sleeves on. I just put my, uh, open the alligator clip, put my fingers there. I just slide this over like that. Okay. You have to make sure it's not too hot. Don't burn your fingers there. Okay. One more step. We need to uh, shrink this heat shrink tubing. So we'd like to plug in the heat gun. It's a little bit like a uh, hair dryer, but it gets hotter, so don't use this as a hair dryer. It'll probably oh, burn your hair. I slide this heat shrink, the heat shrink tubing over top of the joint that we made. And you'll see as I do this, the heat will cause that tubing to shrink right down around the joint. You see it, it does that, so now that uh, that joint won't touch something. It also um, is protected and sealed. That's how you'd repair any wire. If you had a broken wire on the car somewhere, you, you'd do it that way, and now moisture can't get inside that and cause that to corrode. And I won't do this, but if we were to have a tug of war with this now, it would break somewhere besides that joint where we soldered it. It would break here first. Yeah, yeah. And there you have it.